Awesome. Welcome back to the Budget Cut Podcast. I'm Sean Connors with E-Team Sponsor. Joined today by my good buddy, Mr. Ryan Partridge, head football coach at Liberty High School up in Brentwood, California. Good to have you here, buddy. Thanks for having me, man. Excited to be here. You got it. You got it. I'm, I'm, I'm in the presence of greatness, man. We got, uh, we're got <laughs> sitting with a CIF Division One state championship uh, football program and head coach. How does that sound? Yeah, pretty good. I mean, it's still still floating a little bit, and you know, all the accolades that come along with it. It's pretty it's pretty fun, but you know, it's uh, it's been a ride, and it's been hard work, and I uh, finally got there. That's awesome, man. Uh, so your journey is pretty crazy. I, I can't wait to get into that. We'll spend a lot of time on it today. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, let's start with the championship. We'll kind of start from what just recently happened. Hashtag corn country. Yeah. Talk to us about, uh, well, yeah, what was, yeah, I what mean, was I, the ride like? Yeah, I, I mean, the season was awesome. And, you know, the kids it, it battled battled through a little bit of adversity. I mean, tough loss to De La Salle in the playoffs. But uh, with the with the the way California works things, we had another shot and we got a bid to the bid to the NorCal game, beat Valley Christian in a crazy game. And then uh, went down, played Sierra Canyon. And, you know, I was talking to you about it last night. It's like being the athletic director, the the head football coach. I had to plan the the rooms and what kids are going in what rooms. Every freaking meal on the road, <laughs> get the buses ready. And I, I it, it, it hit Wednesday and I'm like, holy shit, like I am not <laughs> – ready for the game yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know so it really was the least prepared I've ever been going into a game and, and it's crazy to think about but I think you put some good insight in on it last night it, and that's that you know we've coached these kids since May you know we've been on the field since May and we, we've instilled the toughness we've we've instilled the um you know the, the, the core values of the team and and I think that the the year long of coaching is what got us through you know we were down in the third and fourth quarter and you know, came back and won and it was uh it was a pretty exciting game. Yeah, that was awesome. <clears throat> you, for those of you out there that don't know, uh, Coach Partridge is one of the most passionate coaches, and you've got a pretty solid bellow for like when you when you give out your yeah yeah it, it it's guttural. I mean, it comes from a yeah. I think I learned that from um, eighth grade uh, choir class. You know, get it from the belly. <laughs> from the you know, belly. I joined that class because there was. Three guys and 75 girls in that class. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, it, your belt out at the end of the game. We, it was really a proud moment, I think, for me, just obviously knowing you and, and you being a client with E-Team Sponsor. It was great to see you. And that, you could tell that came from a place of, wow, you know, we, we, got, we achieved. We got to the top of the mountain. Uh, take us through that, man. What was it like facing your, your yeah. corn country fans? And it just, and you know, so many, so many things go through your head. I mean, the, you, you think about, you know, you, you played, you coach, and the, the memories that you create for these 70 kids, yeah. you know, they, they are state champions. And I told them after the game, like, this is a lifelong accomplishment, you know, and then just looking up in the stands and seeing corn country up there. And, you know, I'm a transplant to that area, but I understand it. And I, I full fledged threw myself into the culture of the area and understand the pride of the alumni. And, um, and it, I mean, there was, there was alumni there that traveled a lot of them just to come watch that game. And like you said, you got friends that went there a long yeah. time ago, all that's over the awesome, country. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a small town that's turned a little bit bigger and you know, it's, they, they've had a rough go at, at football, and but the, all they've always wanted was a good football team. And, you know, I felt like, you know, being the head man in charge and getting the community to that spot was – it was a special moment. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, you know, that'll segue into I think what we – we like to talk about with our coaches and our clients all the time is really opportunity. What is it that you're looking to provide in terms of opportunity? We take pride in the fact that we can provide a solution, obviously, to help you guys raise money and yeah. um, create more opportunities. So just kind of talk to us about your philosophy in, in, in terms of building your program and maybe how fundraising fits in there and, and opportunities for your, your student athletes. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, uh, one is safety. You know, we have to have good helmets, nice shoulder pads, stuff to keep the kids safe. And, you know, if they're safe, you know, we keep them on the field and we want the best players to keep playing. Um, the other thing in this, in this, in this day and age, the kids want cool gear, you know, they so want the swag, they want, the, they want the swag. So, um, you know, we signed a, a, a Adidas contract and, you know, that's, it's not like Adidas has given us stuff. We got to buy it from them, yeah. you know, so providing them with, you know, cool gear that they want to wear. And I want them to wear it on the street. I want the young kids to see our football players downtown Brentwood wearing Liberty football gear. So I want to provide them some good gear um, and nice jerseys. You know, you got to get the, you got to get the jerseys too. And, you know, we're, we're luckily with, with the stuff that you provided, we are on a one, one, every year we're going to get a new jersey and then eventually pass down to jv and 
and outfit the whole the whole program. You guys with. are going to become the Oregon of high school football. You're yeah, one, maybe one yeah. jersey one jersey <laughs> combination for every game, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, and then and then you know we're we're a program now that that has the opportunity where we can play in some pretty big games and we're invited to some big games, but playing in those games, it costs money. So whether we're traveling down to the honor bowl or going down to uh, Southern California and playing a team in LA, which we're figuring out our schedule now, but we want the, we want the availability to do that. And, um, you know, it's like every year we're, it, I, I'm pretty much set now, you know, with the, the other programs I've been at in the past too, it's like, we, we can make 20 grand. You can, we can almost guarantee 20 grand from E-teams. So it's nice. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, we, I know uh, we, we've talked with coaches, and I know you've know, had a couple of co- uh, conversations since you've been here at the AFCA, by the way. We're down here in uh, good old San Antonio, Texas at the AFCA, and um, just talking with coaches and talking about what they use the money for and, 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 I guess, again, back to opportunity. What have you seen in terms of additional opportunities, just in terms of maybe coaches being able to be a part of a program? How much does funding or – um, how much does, does that type of revenue play into things outside of, you know, jerseys and shoulder pads and those types of things? Uh, I think that the, you know, it's, it's travel there. It, it costs so much money, you know, it's a hundred grand to run a football program. So, um, it's just, it's, you know, that you, you need to get good coaches. So you got to pay them, you yeah. know, and you're not going to pay them a lot. It's high school football, but just to get you know, I got, you know, I traveled with 17 coaches down South. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta be able to feed them and, um, it's, uh, it's it it, it it provides opportunities and, and things that we weren't able to do in the past. And I, I was just lucky to, you know, kind of run into you guys and meet you guys through. And I wanted to work with you guys because I was talking ball with you first, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and I, and I told you last night that, I, that I'm with E teams because of the relationships that you and your staff has built with us. So. Cool. That's awesome, man. Well, we appreciate that. That's what it's all about, right? It's all yeah. about relationships and value. And uh, we're happy that we've got a great relationship, obviously with yourself and with all of our coaches across the country. We love that. And uh, if we can keep demonstrating value and helping you guys in that way, that's awesome. So, uh, so talking, talking ball, talking, talking coaching, um, Simon Sinek, great book. Why, you know, what, what the, the why? Why? Why do you do what you do? Yeah, so it, talk to me about, you know, why, why does Ryan Partridge coach high school football? Well, I need to, I need to read that book. You told me <laughs> la- that last night after leaders dinner. Leaders are and, readers. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's truly the the rela- everything's relationships, right? And the, the relationships you can build with these kids. And obviously, I love the game of football, but the game of football. I mean, you look at it's a game. It's silly, you know. It's like, how are we going to outflank our opponent, right? And and that's not, you know, that's a game and that's fun, but it's the relationships that you build with the kids and, you know, the, the strong connections that you have with them that in truly changing lives. And we've all had that coach that's changed your life and, and helped you out down the road. But like, I'm, I'm, I'm detail oriented with, I, I want to get, you know, the worst player on the team that, that never plays to the stud, you know, I want, I want a relationship with them and I don't want it to be just, you know, a a high and buy. I want a connection with them and I want to understand their life. And I think that's a, you know, that, that that might sound cliche and whatnot, but it's definitely my philosophy is like, I'm going to dig deep into these kids and I'm going to find out what their why is. Why are you playing football? And I, and I think that's how you can motivate them. That's awesome. Well, that's what motivation. I mean, that's one thing that I think if anybody that knows you and we know a lot of people that have spoken very highly of you over the years is that you're a master motivator. So where does that come from? Where does that master motivation come from? I don't even know. You know, it's just it's uh, who knows? I don't know if it's natural. I don't know. You know, I've, I've been told that since I was a you know a kid. I'm a planner. I'm a motivator. I'm a, you know, my mom always tells the story about how I was like 12 years old and I planned this huge like tournament of like five different sports and I'm like motivating <laughs> the guys to like, you know, win. I'm like keeping it competitive. And, um, you know, I don't know if it's it's natural within me and um, or someone motivate. I know I know I've had a lot of coaches that were motivating that and, and my cousin Chris at Michigan. I mean, he's he is the, the master motivator, I feel like. And, you know, he won a bunch of state championships in Jersey and now coaches at Michigan and, um, he's definitely a mentor to me and an idol of mine. And, uh, I kind of try to follow or beat his footsteps. It's always competitive, mm, right? Go. Yeah. yeah so. I got to feed it everything, man. Yep. Feed it everything. Right. <laughs> so, you know, talking about, um, you know, your relationships and, 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 uh, working with your kids through your program, was there a coach along the way during your playing days, whether it, you know, growing up through high school and college, uh, that really had that lasting, you know, impact on you? I mean, well, Co- coach Sierra at Amador Valley, it's, uh, um, he 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 really instilled the you know you leave you leave Amador Valley football a better man and 
you know, he, he's, he was motivational. He was, he just, he made you do things the right way. He made you think a, a certain way. So, you know, you think back to coach Sierra, um, think about it b- back about my dad, you know, coaching me and pop Warner and baseball and just the fire he brought to everything. You know, he's third base coach. He's sitting low. He's got his fat dip in and he's just like, <laughs> he, and he is just like, he's screaming and yelling and, and, uh, and uh, like I'm like the, the kid at the time, I'm like, oh my gosh, Dad! Like, quiet down a little. And all the other guys are like, whoa! They're just fired up, you know. And and you know, so it's uh, those two guys. I mean, my dad and, and Coach Sierra, and then uh, um, Ray Shackelford, rest in peace. He's a uh, junior college head coach at, at Golden West College. I mean, he coached my dad and all four of his brothers, and then I went back and and played at golden west and he was still there and he's he wow. he was like what was that like you have he stories like, about your family he was like oh god so many stories about my family and he's like you know he got all those guys division one scholarships out of there he got me one out of there and um you know he, he must have been i mean he was a fossil he was probably <laughs> 85 years old coaching his ass off that's awesome so, yeah it he, was, played, uh, he coached he probably played and coached football when the dinosaurs were on there right been absolutely that yeah <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was there forever so um, you know, he, he was awesome. And coach Jerome Sowers up at Northern Arizona, he just retired this year, but he was, a uh, you know, I didn't realize what he was doing for me at the time, you know, with the struggles that I had through college football and whatnot. But he, um, he, he, he I, I went back 10 years later and wrote him an email and thanked him. He reached out to me and, and said, thank you. And, and so th- there's some things that I carry in my program to this day, um, that were from Jerome Sowers at NAU. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Sounds like you've taken a little bit of piece of everybody. No along doubt. The way. Got it. You guys, that's the name of the game, you know, steal things and, and use them. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. Uh, replicate success, yeah, right? Exactly. Replicate success. Yeah. Good. So let's uh, let's talk a little about the family lineage, man. Let's talk about your, uh, your cousin uh, up there at Michigan. And- yeah, so uh, I come from a family of football. Um, my dad and his four brothers, all Division I football players. My dad played at Cal Poly. Uh, my Uncle Jeff played at University of Washington. Uncle Rick played at University of Utah. Um, Uncle Bob played at Occidental. And then my Uncle Bruce played at University of Arizona. And so um, none of those guys really got into coaching, but it seems like the next generation did. So my cousin Chris, who's Rick's son, uh, he was the head coach. He played at Lafayette University and was the head coach of Paramus Catholic in New Jersey. They were a perennial powerhouse for five years when he was there. Um, And then Harbaugh gave him a call and said, you know, I need a director of recruiting. He went there and it's like immediate success. You got 24 seven rival scout.com recruiter of the year. Um, and you know, anywhere in the top 25, it was all position coaches, but he's just a guy sitting in the office and he, he was crushing it. You know, he's, he's now the, the, the first guy at Michigan ever to go down to Georgia and go in the South and, and steal players from SEC teams. I don't know the Daxton Hill kid, the five-star safety down there in Georgia. He, uh, I think he's in Georgia, maybe he's in Oklahoma or something, but he, uh, he commits to Michigan in, in August. And then in December, flips to Alabama. And signing day, so everyone's like, he's gone, right? Well, yep. signing day comes, December 19th, signing day. Daxton Hill signs with Michigan. Wow. <laughs> they flipped him back from wow. Alabama. And, um, you know, it, it, last year, Saban calls my cousin and wants to bring him aboard. And, you know, he denied him. He's, he's a very, very loyal guy. You know, the respect he has for Coach Harbaugh and staying with him. And, you know, yeah he's recruited 35 plus kids on that team. And, you know, so the, the, the loyalty to them too, but he's, um, and he's not just a good recruiter. He's a, he's a hell of a ball coach. And so he's coached linebackers there. He's coached safeties there. And, uh, he's a special teams coordinator. That was the one, you know, watching the Michigan game. I'm like, Oh my God, they're getting a the butts kicked by Florida, but yeah. you know, we blocked two punts and you know, yeah. he's a special teams coordinator. So that was a little pride there. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. That's great. Well, it sounds like there's a ball is in the, the Partridge family yeah. for sure, man. Yep. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about the uh, trip back to Michigan. You got it. You've got a quarterback at Liberty that uh that's a that's a stud national recruit tell us about that trip and yeah and so what that was like yeah so we uh got Jay Butterfield he's I mean he's an absolute stud great kid you know 4.1 GPA just smart kid you know easy to coach and uh lucky to have him so Michigan offers him you know I've been telling I've been telling Michigan about him since he was younger and uh you know finally Pep Hamilton came out and saw him throwing like what are we waiting on like no doubt you know <laughs> And uh, so we decided to, you know, on our bye week, you know, it's a bye week and we got pit the next week and that's a huge game, but we're, you know, let's, let's go have fun. So we went out to Michigan and it was a really cool experience. Four players came, 
Um, you know, the other three players didn't get the uh, attention that Jay Butterfield got when he got there. But you know, you're walking down Ann Arbor and people are going, "That's Jay Butterfield." Yeah. You know, they they know there, and um, so we got to sit down in Pep's room and 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 you know go through Jay's tape. And prior to that, when me and this is this is a pretty good story. Prior to that, when when me and um, our DC Brian Real went to Michigan to visit and you know grab Don Brown's defense from him. We, uh, Chris is like, my cousin's like, Hey, we're going into a recruiting meeting. I have no idea how long this is going to last. And, um, he's like, just hang out in the office. You can watch films, whatever. Five minutes later, they're like, he texts me and he's like, Hey, come in here. Coach wants to talk to you. We're watching 2020 quarterbacks. And so I go in there and me and my DC, who's never been in this kind of situation before at, at this huge university, we walk in and there's 25 staff members and I'm sitting there next to the big screen. He's like, Take me through, take me through Jay Butterfield's game, and so I'm taking through the game. I'm taking him through our progressions. I'm mentioning other players we had that would fit well for them. <laughs> there you go. And uh, it was it was a pretty cool experience, though. Wow. Yeah, it was, we were we were dialed in, and then we we uh, we left. We're like, hey, we're gonna leave. And he's like, where are you going? Sit down. And he's asking me about other quarterbacks. Like, what do you think about him? Why is Jay better? You know. Yeah. So it was it was a pretty cool experience. But back to our trip, um, you know, we got to sit down in plenty of meetings and. Uh, 111,000 people against Wisconsin night game, um, electric, I'm sure. Yeah. And and my wife and my daughter got to come too, and they're sitting across the, uh, they're sitting like across the aisle for me and they sit down in their seats and they're sitting next to Ken Griffey jr. (laughs) And like, (laughs) they they have no clue, but his son's a corner recruit for them. Got it. And, uh, and they have no clue who Ken Griffey Jr. is. I'm like, hey, girls, smile. And I'm like taking a picture, and Ken Griffey Jr. is behind him. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. Oh, that's yeah. great, man. That yeah. sounds like a trip of a lifetime. Yeah, that's that awesome. awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. You know, and it's pretty pretty amazing, too. I mean, you're young. You're 32? 34. 34. Yeah. 34. 34 years old. You've experienced already all of this. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty crazy. You, Appreciate you, that. You, there's guys that coach for 40, 50 years and probably don't get an opportunity to do mm-hmm. that. So that's uh, that's awesome, man. Um, I was going to ask you about just in terms of you know challenges with coaching. Uh, we I love this question to ask coaches because I think it's uh, it gives us a place of uh, uh, you know a, a really an opportunity for us to learn a little bit more about what everyone faces in terms of challenges. They come in all different shapes and sizes, whether you're an urban school or a rural school and uh, private or cat you know uh, private school, public school. What would you say is your number one challenge coaching at, at, at Liberty High School? Um, I mean, there's, there's plenty. I mean, the, 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 there's, you know, there's little challenges like keeping the kids fed. You know, they're, they're, you don't, there's a lot of hungry kids on our campus and hungry kids in our, in our program. And, the, the, you know, just ke- keeping our food bin full. You know, just little challenges like that. Um, you know, being a young co- the, the youngest coach on my coaching staff and managing ex-head coaches that specifically were at the, our school you know um and nfl and, guys <laughs> yeah and and, and managing I, you know I have, I have four nfl guys on staff and so you know how am i gonna you know bring credibility to what i do like how do i get these guys to buy into my program so the co- the, the coaches thing is almost more challenging to get the players to believe you know i got there's four nfl guys there's 65 year olds there's um there's all these guys and i do things different you know i'm you know, I bring the energy every day and I'm, I'm probably annoying to these older guys and they just want to do it the old school way. And I'm, I'm also, you know, my, my downfall fall sometimes is I'm impulsive and I'll come up with this idea and I need it done now. And we got to get this done now. We're installing it now. And you know, that, that can, that can, uh, you know, I got Co- coach Beaver, like God bless him. He, he has been so amazing to me, but he, I mean, he, that guy's eating a ham sandwich for lunch every day for 35 years that he's coached at Liberty. So getting him off of his track and, and, uh, you know, a, you know, asking these guys to come in on Saturdays and Sundays just to get things right. I think the, um, you know, managing a, a big coaching staff and experienced coaching staff, um, has probably been my, my biggest challenge. Not that it's been, it's challenged me and it's made me better and, and not to say anything bad about any of my coaches, just challenging to get all these guys on the same page. It's, sure. it's almost like a second team within the team. We got to be a team as a coaching staff and then we got to be a, the kids have to be a team and then we got to be all a team together. So understanding that there's challenges, then typically it's okay, great. You got to figure out what's the solution. So, you know, one of our company mantras is find a better way, right? right? So whether there's a challenge or a problem, 
So you've got that challenge. What's been the solution? How have you got these guys on the same page? It's, it's, we're going to go back to it. It's relationships. Yeah. It's, it's sit down one-on-one -on -one conversations with these guys and, and letting them know my vision and um, where I'm coming from and just understand me. Please go with the flow. It's, uh, it's a one-day-at-a-time mentality sometimes. And, um, but but it, it just comes down to, you know, I'm in a group of, of 15 coaches and I'm, throwing out this crazy idea and I see, you know, someone's eyes roll in the back of their head, like, Oh my <laughs> God. It's like, okay, well, me and you were talking after, and I'm going to, I'm going to let's dig deeper into this and why I'm really doing it. What, 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 why my idea, you know, I want to come to fruition. Sure. Yeah. Pivoting is, is, is important. You got to be able to pivot nowadays. Yeah. Um, it's got to happen quick. I get that. Trust me. I, and, I understand. <laughs> and the, uh, the biggest thing, I think that the, the hardest thing was this year when we had 29 day lull cause the fires, you know, and that was truly one day at a time. We didn't know what the AQI was at 3.30 when we started practice. So what were we going to do that day? And we, I had to have five different ideas ready. You know, the gym's being taken by the basketball teams. The, so what are we going to do? And um, so we came up with a bunch of different creative ideas and nothing, you know, nothing groundbreaking. But we were able to find walkthroughs in certain areas and, you know, take advantage of the classroom more. But it was frustrating, but majorly challenging. Oh, I bet. I bet. And for those of you that don't know, out in California this past year, most everybody probably will know because of, it made national news, but most devastating fires in the history of the state of California. Um, it affected people all the way down to Southern California, especially down where we were. That was three hours north of, of the Bay Area where we're all located. And uh, yeah, what a challenging time. Um, w one last thing on just, I'll say overall, uh, the challenges, but also your, your past season, um, high school football season is almost as long as an NFL season now. So, I know. <laughs> you know, talk to me about some of the changes that you've seen since you started your coaching career in terms of how long, you know, seasons go. It's not just 10 game season anymore, playoffs and, and, and district championships and section championships and all the way down to the state playoffs. What kind of challenges did that pose? Yeah. I mean, you're like, like we talked about, we've been on, we were on the field from May, 14th until December 16th wow. and um it's just you know it's it's and I tell my coaches all the time you know if you get if you act burnt out or you get bored at a drill the kids do so don't get we are we're gonna be great at fundamentals and we're we're gonna work technique and we're gonna get you, you might get bored but don't act like it because we got to get these kids right you know so you know it's it's a I don't know how many practices that is, but from May to December, and I'm demanding a tackling circuit every single practice, you know? So, um, it's the, there's, the, there's, you want to do new things, but you, the, the, the fundamentals and the technique, like I'm not budging on, like we're, we're working that. And so, um, just getting, getting coaches and, and players to understand that this is what we do. And, and, you know, at the end it works, yeah. you know, um, but it's just every every day is a new challenge. I mean, with with the kids, you know, there's you know, like I talk about the kids that need clothes, the kids that need food, the um, the the kids that have you know, I pulled over because I saw a kid on the side of the road and he pulled over and he said he pulled over because he was about to run his car into a pole because he wanted to, you know, he was having trouble with life. And I'm sitting on the side of the road and the kids wow. crying to me and it's uh. And that's not that hasn't only happened one time. When you have sixty five, seventy kids in a program, there's there's some life issues and deep family issues that 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 can happen. And and that's the most rewarding thing is getting the kid out of the mindset, you know, and ha and and building that connection with the kid, and you know, letting him know that you're here for life. You know, I, I want to be for, here for you for life. And um, so th those those are rewarding, you know, getting the get just just affecting the kids and 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 just helping them become better men you know that's awesome man yeah. that's awesome well, hopefully that young man's doing better now yeah, he's doing awesome that's yes. great yeah. that's great well, that's, that's great man well that's we'll uh we'll get into some of the the light-hearted stuff here now and talk a little have a little fun uh best high school football player you saw on a football field this year sioni vaki my guy uh why when he runs the the turf tears you know he's extremely I like that i like that a lot he's he's extremely powerful the 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 jumping ability the ability to make one-handed catches the the hits that he puts on at safety because he's a two-sided player and i mean you know he filled the hole and you know they started triple teaming him late in the season and understandably i would too um 
But what does he, what's he do? He makes fo- up on it on special teams and, and on defense. And he had that fourth down stop and stopped him for zero yards on fourth and two. And it's just like th- that's, you know, Sione couldn't get the ball today because we couldn't get it to him. But, you know, he he made, he made it happen somewhere else. That's awesome. Um, that 2-0 toe kid at De La Salle is pretty damn special. Um, the uh, the Schmark Garrett kid at De La Salle is pretty dang good. Um the, those are, but but Sione Vaki that the the against Pittsburgh he he single handedly won that game for us and that game hasn't been won in a long time at Liberty so yeah you guys broke a broke a streak there for yeah. a number of years yeah. right yes that's great that's awesome uh, in terms of coaching uh, coaches that you've coached against whether it's this year or since you've been a head coach who's the one coach that you look across the sideline and say wow I admire the heck out of that guy and I do not want to face him or his team ever again. <sighs> Oh man, I mean, there's 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 a there's a lot of a lot of good coaches in our area. I mean, it it I was I was nervous going into Murph and and Clayton Valley and the double wing. Luckily, we had 29 days to prepare for that double <laughs> yeah. wing. And, um, but you know the 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 track record and success and the, the amount of kids that he gets into that school and um, so it was it was nice to take care of business against your alma mater. Yeah. Um, Obviously, the De, the De La Salle game it, the, every year. I mean, they've they've done it every year for what thirty six years or whatever it is. And um, but th- those are the like the De La Salle ones. Like, I want another shot at them. You know, I sure, just want to yeah. keep like yeah, the competitive, the competitive yeah, side, yeah, right? You you just you just want to um, you d- you just want to try to you want you want that shot to be that coach to take down De La Salle as a little old public school in Brentwood, and you know, so we we're. We were lucky to have that shot, but uh, you just you got to be so disciplined against them, and it's it's you know it's hard to do. And you'll get another shot. You get you get another yeah, shot. You keep will. doing things the way you're doing it. You're gonna be fine. Uh, what's uh, what's Coach Partridge listen to pregame? What's his uh, what's his music of choice? Either Tool. Tool. Every time. Little known fact: Terry Edson, assistant head coach, D coordinator at Dale Sal. Tool Huge guy. Huge Tool fan. Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah. In fact, I'll, I'm gonna test your Tool knowledge here. Here we go. A perfect circle. Do yeah. you remember that? Yeah. Oh, a little yeah. spin off yeah. with, okay, all right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, a little three Libras action. No doubt. Yeah, okay, all right. That's, that's not too All right, I yeah, like that. Okay, yeah. good, good. All right, so, Tool, you got a, a specific album or song that you uh, you pump up or crank up I mean, uh, the, pregame? The, the Pot, Anima, Sober. Um, yeah, those are. Those, those are the go to. Vicarious, yeah. Okay, got it. All right, yeah. good deal, good deal. Uh, ever seen Tool live in concert? Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, you, you say that like you've seen it a few times. Yes. All right. Any uh, any specific I've, venue that was uh, better than the the other? I've seen them quite a few <clears throat> times. I forget what venue. San Francisco one. Um, one time, one time we went down there. We bought scalper tickets for 150 bucks, and we didn't get let in. We had to watch a show from the outside. We had luckily had a view. Oh it was, no! Yeah, it was crazy. They're so underground. Like they'll pop up and. And it's like, oh, there's a show in San Francisco in two days. Like I didn't even hear about it because they yeah. hate marketing. They sure, yeah. they're not on, they're not on Apple Music. Yeah. You know, they're <laughs> yeah. So so and that's kind of the you know, their way of doing things. And but yeah, Tool for sure. Okay. All right. Zepp, Zeppelin sometimes. Um, all right, going deep there. Yeah, taking it way um, back. And then you know, just depending on my my mood, like throughout the day, just you know, hitting some country and whatnot there you go all yeah. right i get enough rap from the kids in the weight room oh, just, that's where i was going so. next i was going to say in corn country what's what's the kids go to what's on the uh what's on the what's on the uh who uh, knows the radio what the, or <laughs> mumble rap like it's uh <laughs> you're not a fan you know, i take Co- it kodak black and you know it's i uh i don't um i don't hate it i i think i get annoyed by it because it's like so much mumble rap and i've never heard the song but like i'll you know, I want to stay involved and I want to stay in the know. So I'm like, okay, what is this song they're all singing? And I'll, I'll download it and listen yeah. to it. And like, I actually, it's a good song if I'm by myself listening to it. There you go. There they're you all go. singing. I'm like, lift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great. That is great, man. Good. Um, <clears throat> in terms of, uh, uh, I like the whole leader, re- leaders or readers uh, thing um, and, and mantra. What, you're a leader of a program and of young men and, 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 and a coaching staff. Uh, big reader. Yeah, so each off season, I'll I'll try to, you know, I'll, t- I'll try to read. Um, I always say above the line changed my life. Okay, as a coach, why? Um, just giving me a kind of a vision, and uh, I read it right before my interview at Livermore, and kind of it gave me a it gave me a foundation to kind of spin off what I had, my already vision was for the program. But um, you know, really creating more than just you know the captain of your team, like. You need to have multiple captains, and you need a close relationship with those guys. 
um, you know, I, I think Coach Herman said it after the Texas game. You want to you want a player led locker room, not a coach's fed locker room. And you know, I obviously I want to be the main motivator on the team, but the but the players got to find it from within, and you need to build that relationship with in the in the leadership within the within the program through the players. And so we have battalion leaders, eight guys each year. And, uh, you know, we'd do some leadership courses with them and, um, they're on a text thread with me and we're, we're, you know, I'm tight with my battalion leaders. And, you know, if I hear it's a way for me to, you know, going back to some, some kids problems, like, you know, they, they come to me with, Hey, you know, this kid, you know, Billy's having a, having an issue on this, or, Hey, this guy's told me he's not doing well in this class and I can, you know, go straight to that kid and, and help him. So it's a, I get information that I wouldn't get otherwise, um, throughout the whole program and, and team. Wow, that really does sound like, I mean, that's that's yeah. very impactful. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it, that's awesome to hear. And I'm sure coaches that are listening to the podcast can definitely uh, take something and learn from that for yeah. sure. That's awesome, man. Well, good. Well, uh, it's been awesome, dude. This has been great. This Amazing. This has been a great. It, I mean, <laughs> hey, man, you're, you, you made it. You made it to the Budget Cut podcast with <laughs> E-Team it. sponsor. And, uh, yeah, we, we appreciate it, man. We're excited to have you down here at the AFCA in San Antonio. And we came all the way from – we probably live 30 minutes apart from one another, and we traveled uh, I don't know how many miles, almost 2,000 miles yep. to come down here and do a podcast. But um, we'll make sure that you, you become a regular on the podcast. That's awesome. You know where to find us. We know where to find you. And appreciate your time, dude. Absolutely. Thanks, Sean. You got it. Thanks, Ryan. Yep.